First off, who is or was the bottle rocket? Oh, where'd you get that from? <laughs> did my research. Did my research. Oh, wow. Oh, the player's going to get after me on this one. Okay, so um, I played for a guy by the name of Ken O'Keefe and Joe Philbin. They allowed me to run track. They allowed me to play a dual sport athlete. And uh, I had a track meet at Notre Dame. And I was the only Division Three athlete in the track meet. Sure enough, Rocket Ishmael is in the lane next to me, and he's going to try to break the, the national 55-meter record. And uh, so I'm in this meet. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, above my head with the talent around me. And um, so the gun goes off, and boom, I actually get off to a great start, and I'm in, uh, in the lead. And uh, pow, the second gun goes off, and it's a, <laughs> somebody false starts. And I'm like, okay, that had to be me, because I, I never had a start like that before. And uh, so it was not me. So we turn around, we go back, and, you know, I got out on Rocket, you know, and I'm just proud of that moment. And uh, we line up again, and here comes the, the third gun, and pow, it goes off, and I'm in the lead again. Again, the best start of my life. And like a flash, the Rocket Ishmael passes me about halfway down the track and um, sets the record. But I definitely, uh, you know, had my personal best surprise to everybody. Everybody wants to know who is this kid from Allegheny College? Who's this Division Three athlete that's hanging with these Division One athletes? Ken O'Keefe just took it from there and said, hey, I'm going to start calling you the Bottle Rocket. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> he said, I'm calling you the Bottle Rocket. And it just kind of just caught fire amongst the teammates, and I have not been able to shake it since. So. Well, you're kind of a legend in, in your parts, Allegheny College multiple time All-American on the D3 level. What allowed you to be that good at that level? Well, I, I always thought um, that I was better than the level that I was at. And uh, I had this edge about me that I wanted to prove people wrong. Uh, I was a little bit of a late de developer coming out of high school, no doubt. Size, I was a small guy, you know, uh, wasn't very thick or anything like that, but I just had this edge about me to try to be the best. I went about my business every day with that, with that edge, and it really turned out to be a successful attribute for me on the field and on the track. So, How would you say that you have applied that to your coaching style, that edge? It's a mindset that you have to have. You know, um, if, if at any level that you're at, if you're trying to be the best, um, you have to put in uh, work at a high level, and it requires a relentless mindset. Wherever room I've been in, whatever team I've been a part of, it's about trying to be the best that you can possibly be. And it's not all about your talent. You know, your talent takes you so far, but then it's got to be a certain way you think, a certain way that you, uh, you know, go about your business. It's your mindset that gets you to, um, to being great. Speaking of that, helping you become great, you did that with Brian Westbrook at Villanova. That was really one of your first breakthrough jobs as a coach. What would you say that that experience, Brian Westbrook, you coaching him, meant to your coaching trajectory? <sighs> Brian Westbrook was such a versatile athlete. He was super smart. And he, too, uh, had that same similar type experience that I had. You know, he thought he was better than Villanova. He thought that, you know, the Ohio State, the Texases, the, you know, the Maryland should have been recruiting him. And uh, he came in there with this edge already about him. And I was a young coach at the time, you know. I still thought that I can run as fast as Brian Westbrook and still do the same things that my athletes were doing. So, you know, he and I shared that together. We went to work every single day. And it wasn't about just protocol of what you're supposed to do. It's about what you're doing when people aren't really watching you. You know, what are you doing, you know, when, when the coach doesn't have a whistle around his neck? You know, what are you doing on your, no, on your own when a coach is not even around you? And we talked about that thing, you know, those kinds of things every single day. And uh, he embraced it. He embraced it. And it was no doubt that he was going to become great. So there is a long list of amazing running backs that you've been a part of developing them in their career. I want to ask you just some superlatives and if you can kind of give me the guy that fits that bill Let's run through these, starting with best feet. Of everyone you worked with, who's got the best feet? I would have to say the best feet would go to Brian Westbrook. He was just a guy who was never out of control. All right, He can stop on a dime and accelerate with the best of them. Best vision? Arian Foster, you know, probably had the best 
vision in the, in the zone scheme. He always had his eyes downfield. He had a patience and a, a, the perfect tempo about him to kind of set up blocks, place people on double teams, and he would take this uncanny first step to get to a hole that's not even developed yet. But he just had this, uh, this feel and this vision, this uh, anticipation about him that he never misfit a, a zone scheme. I cannot remember one time where he misread a play. How about the biggest wow factor? The guy that could break it, hit the home run? I would have to say specifically uh, Ezekiel Elliott in his sophomore year, all right? And actually uh, sophomore year in the playoff series. That's when he uh, became a totally different football player. Ezekiel Elliott, and he's got an opening. Elliott, off to the races. Can they catch him? No, they can't. Touchdown. 85 yards. It was against Alabama. You know, there was a couple of runs where, uh, as you know, Alabama's a very physical football team. He was playing on contact, playing through contact against guys who became first rounders and starters in the NFL to this day. There was a time where this young back just showed that he was turning into a, a grown man. And in the midst of everybody's eyes on a big stage, there was a lot of wow going on and watching him develop in the midst of that game. Stan Drayton, that's my guy. He really, the biggest reason I think why I'm here today, why I'm the back I am today, he made sure when I, when I learned this position that I learned it thoroughly. I learned not just what I do, but what the guys around me do, and that made me understand the game so much better. Now to turn it to here at the University of Texas, you told us on signing day that Chris Warren has told you he wants to be great. How can you help him become great? You know, the thing with Chris is that um, – he just has to learn how to, to bring that, what it takes to be great, work ethic to work every single day. You know, he's got to put in relentless effort every single day. So what we did with Chris Warren is we identified what his why is, what his purpose is. Those are the things that are off the field that you don't see when the helmet's on, that you, you know, he probably won't even talk to you about. And I want to expose them to you today. You know, but those are the things where he's got a big purpose and a, an incredible why about him that if he just taps into it in those moments where it get, when it gets tough and keeps it on the forefront of his mind every single day that he wakes up, I really do believe he can become great. Collectively, for your running backs, what do you want to see develop in the spring? Uh, I just think we need to, we need to get um, a good, firm football IQ. I think we have a lot of learning to do. We have to become... Um, systematically more sound and understanding what defenses are trying to do. That's the one thing that uh, I think they're a little bit behind on. All right, they, they need to really increase their knowledge as far as the game is concerned. Um, they need to be more consistent in their toughness and how they go about approaching the off season. We back them into the corner, you wanna see how they respond. All right, uh, there's been some times I like the response and there's been some times where I have not. We have to eliminate the inconsistency in that respect. As we move forward, if they can just get just tougher mentally, physically, uh, put their purpose and why in the forefront of everything they do, uh, this group will go in the direction we're trying to take them.